Hello. Hi. Well, thank you, Nancy, for that inspiring talk. And thank you, Alan, for the introduction. So I'm Prozapine Peralta. I'm an, an engineering manager in Fugro. I'm, I work in the Norfolk office in Virginia. So today I'd like to talk about and, and highlight the challenges in and the importance of geotechnical engineering in offshore wind. Um, but before that, I'd like to give, I know I have a 12 minutes time, um, a, a, a quick uh, um, uh, introdu a, a quick reminder of the fourth international symposium on frontiers in offshore geotechniques. This will be uh, held at the University of um, Texas in Austin in August. And prior to that, there will be a series of three symposium webinars. Um, excuse me, I'm not so sure you see the slides of, right, okay. It's not showing on the screen, oh, perfect, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's probably a bigger screen here. Yeah, so I'd like to talk, I'd just like to give a, a quick um, reminder of the fourth international symposium on frontiers in offshore geotechniques, or the ISFOG, um, held in Austin, Texas in August 28 to 31. And prior to that, there will be a series of pre-symposium webinars that are free to attend. Um, the next will happen in, on April 28 and will continue until June 23. So please don't forget to register for the free webinar series, but also for the symposium in August. Now, back to offshore wind, in the US and globally, there's a huge potential um, for offshore wind, with the US recently setting a goal of 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by the year 2030. And in fact, there is a projected trajectory of 110 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by 2050. So the potential is huge. And um, in the US to date, there are at least 39 wind energy areas that have been identified, most of them along the East Coast, on the Atlantic Outer Continental Shelf, but also on the West Coast, offshore California, and in offshore Hawaii. Now, these offshore wind turbines can be very expensive. Market studies indicate that um, a typical cost is around $1.3 million per megawatt of energy capacity. And given that a modern day wind turbine um, can reach around 12 megawatts of capacity, the turbine can cost as much as or more than $15 million. Some of the key drivers of cost are the site conditions. The farther the distance from the shore and the deeper the water depths, the more expensive the turbines become. And of course, easier ground conditions will lead to lower foundation risks and lower foundation sizes. Um, one of the biggest cost drivers is technology development with development leading to bigger, larger wind turbines, meaning larger foundations as well, but also fewer foundations to be built. And a third key driver of the cost is the supply chain uh, evolution. Now, what is the cost contribution of the foundation component? The com foundation component of this can be between anywhere between 10 and 20% of the overall wind turbine cost. So it is important to realize that um, identifying and mitigating the geotechnical risks can significantly reduce the overall cost of a wind turbine. Now, how large are these wind turbines? Just to give you an idea, um, a typical wind turbine of, offshore wind turbine of 12 megawatts can have hub heights of greater than 400 feet and rotor diameters spanning greater than 600 feet so that it easily dwarfs the Statue of Liberty. And these large structures um, will have to have foundations that are also quite large. A typical monopile foundation, for example, for these wind turbines can have a diameter of 12 meters and must be embedded into um, the subsoil uh, of between 50, 40 to, to 60 meters. Now these foundations must be designed to have the stability to withstand the hurricane forces and the storm wind and wave loads, and also must be designed to be installed to the required depth. 
Now I'll go through a couple of the geotechnical challenges that we face um, in the East Coast, in the North Atlantic Outer Continental Shelf. It is well known that boulder fields are present. These boulders um, are present on the seafloor and can be embedded in depth or at depth in the glacial moraine foundation formations. Um, these identified boulders can have diameters anywhere between 0.5 meters um, to 10 meters and more. So very huge boulders. And a couple of the design challenges that we have now been facing is how to assess the risk um, of a pile encountering a boulder during pile installation or pile driving. And if it does encounter a boulder at depth, um, how can we assess the impact forces and whether the impact forces will lead to a pile tip damage and further propagation on the pile. Another challenge that we face um, here in the US are the presence of weak and crushable soils. Um, again, in the East Coast, um, we have seen thick layers of glauconitic sand. These glauconitic sands are usually distinguishable by the very low QC, CPT QC values and the low friction values on the CPT data. What's glauconite? Um, glauconite are, are pellets that are much weaker than silica sands. They are highly crushable, and therefore they're susceptible to cyclic degradation. So here I'm just presenting some of the measured values of the glauconitic sand strength. Um, in this case, uh, the undrained shear strength. So we can see that the undrained shear strength of glauconitic sand is typically much lower than the strength of the silica sand. Other weak soils we see in the East Coast are micaceous sand. Um, micaceous sand have mica flakes that are made of platy particles, and these platy particles can form bridge mechanisms in the soil, leading to higher void ratios, and therefore um, are highly compressible material. Now, some studies indicate that even as little as 1% of mica in the sand can already affect the stress strain behavior and also reduce the soil friction angles. And lastly, I want to talk about some challenges that we see on the West Coast. Um, the site conditions on the West Coast indicate water depths of between 500 to 1,300 meters. So great for floating offshore wind turbines. Um, site conditions also indicate the presence of rock outcrops and very soft mud, as you can see here. Um, another challenge we see is that these wind energy areas in the West Coast are in seismically active areas. So in the future, designing of anchors for floating offshore wind turbines will be a challenge. Um, designing drilled and grouted anchors for the rocks or drag anchors in the soft mud um, are uh, um, future topics that we have to address. So I think that was it for me. Um, as a closing, I'd like to say that these are exciting times for geotechnical engineers. Um, there are huge and challenging tasks ahead of us and that we can greatly contribute to the development of, of offshore wind in the US.